Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business. Let's wake up the football gods. And let me thank you guys again because when I screw up, you let me know that I screwed up. And I'm doing some changes here, trying to streamline this stuff and get some other stuff together and understand I'm not an AV guy and I screw up all the time and I hit one wee button over here and that ended up changing my volume and I didn't check it before I sent it out which is my mistake Lord 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 Brunson sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do and one of those is go through and actually defend a former Philadelphia Eagle player. I, I know that just sounds crazy in my mind, but we have a Philadelphia Eagle YouTuber who seems very well educated and very well spoken. So he's not your typical Eagle one. But he came back at me because I said that the Dallas Cowboys' Randy Gregory should be reinstated by the NFL because what Chris Long had said. Chris Long admitted that, hey, I've smoked weed on a regular basis over my 11 years of the playing in the NFL. Chris Long, NFL's Man of the Year. Chris Long, two-time Super Bowl winning defensive end. Chris Long. Chris Long, who stood up with Malcolm Jenkins for the anthem protest. And regardless of which side you're on, Chris Long has been on the side of trying to make awareness. Chris Long who one of his charities is going to Africa and drilling wells and getting other NFL players involved in drilling wells so that people can have clean water in places we've never heard of. Doing things that other players could give a rat's ass about. So it amazed me when I heard this from Lord Brunson. What you doing, Chris Long? What you doing? Walter Payton, man of the year, two-time Super Bowl champion, in my opinion, a Hall of Fame resume, just off the strength alone of what you've done. Just off the strength alone of your daddy's good name and the things you've achieved as well. You was going to get into the Hall of Fame. You were going in there. Listen, man, a lot of people not as fortunate. Let me back up. Lil' Brunson back at you with the back at you. And I am the best reporter on the Eagles. Listen, you do not never Nicky Barnes your situation. Don't ever do that. And that's what Chris Long just did. Basically what he did was say, aha, I didn't get caught. And now I'm going to say what I was doing the whole time. I'm going to give you two uh, point of views on... Um, you, know, you know. You're wrong. You are looking at this totally the wrong way he wasn't telling on himself to say ha ha I got away with it I beat the system ha ha no this is a man and, and I can't believe I'm standing up for an Eagle fan this is a man who has stood up for injustice all his life this is a man who has given back all his life and he realizes that, hey, when you think about opioids and the 47,000 deaths a year because people are taking opioids to deal with pain. Because understand, playing football is not like anything else. You know, when you're in a car wreck or you hurt your back, you know, the doctor gives you a prescription, you know, for pain. I personally, because I've got a screwed up knee, I get refills of 800 milligrams of ibuprofen, which is considered a mild drug. 800 milligrams. To give you an example, when you take Advil, you take two. Each one of these tablets is the equivalent of four. And sometimes I have to double up, which is 1,600 milligrams of ibuprofen for the pain. I never played professional football. And the thing about taking this Advil, they tell you, careful how much you take, even though we're giving you three refills of 100 at a whack, just take them as needed, that it damages your liver. 
as well as other side effects. Because every time you take a drug, a prescription, generally speaking, it may fix one thing, but then it messes up a few more. And understand what these guys are doing on a weekly, daily basis for our entertainment to stay on the field. Dealing with the headaches, the nausea. Because I remember being knocked the F out and having a concussion and being sensitive to light. And still to this day, sometimes I'm really sensitive to bright light. The nausea, feeling, and so forth. And what's amazing is... You make it sound like, you know, you, you, you the stereotype that we all have. Because understand, they're just discovering a lot of benefits now about marijuana. They always used it for glaucoma, for cancer treatment, to help deal with the chemo, to get over the nausea feeling and so forth. Now they're realizing that they're making pain patches. Hell, the former Speaker of the House is one of the biggest producers of marijuana now, John Brenner. John, uh, you know, the orange man. Here in Virginia, even though it's not legalized yet, JMU and UVA have bought up these huge farms and are growing it like crazy to do testing on it. The NFL and the NFLPA have finally decided we're going to do a two-year study on marijuana as well as other pain relief medications. Jake Long wasn't doing this to kind of say, ha ha, no. He was doing it because he sees it as something different. And like I pointed out, there's 47,000 deaths a year due to opiates. And I think back to how many times we've heard about drunk driving with football players. Wild man Donahue from the Jets, who's a free agent who's going around now trying to get a job. Blew a .25, went the wrong way through the Lincoln Tunnel, and hit a bus. Dante Stallworth, Josh Brent, killed other people drinking and driving. And the NFL's response to that was, okay, we're going to partner with Uber. You're too drunk to drive. Call one of them. It's a freebie. No questions asked. So it's not dealing with an addiction. It is just dealing with the problem for public perception. And as far as I can tell, drinking doesn't necessarily help deal with the pain so much as, say, the marijuana. And I'm not a, a, a per I, I don't smoke weed. But hearing what a lot of players, and believe me, it's not just Jake Long, excuse me, Chris Long and Randy Gregory that are smoking weed. And talking to former players that I know and people, there's a lot of weed smoking that's going on. It's just that knowing that there's between April 20th and August 8th, sometime in there, I will be tested. I just need to be clean then. And once that's done, it ain't no, no big deal. Because I won't be tested again unless I fail that one test. And that's where it is with Randy Gregory. So... It's safe to assume that if Jake Long says for that two months you end up taking sleeping pills or uh, drinking a little bit or other pain medication, that the other 10 months of the year that he is smoking on a regular basis and knowing that Randy Gregory would be tested 10 times a month and knowing that he's only failed like seven or eight the reality is that Jake Long could actually be smoking more than Randy Gregory. And if the idea is really to stop weed being in the NFL, then everybody should be tested on a regular basis. Otherwise, it's just a farce. And that's what Jake Long is saying. Listen, this situation is bullshit. You're not really testing to stop it. You're just making the appearance of looking like we care. And maybe you're upset because maybe it might actually benefit the Dallas Cowboys to be able to get back a Randy Gregory. I don't know. But instead of shaking your head at him, you should actually applaud the fact that you had that kind of player, a stand-up guy on your team, 
that helped you finally, after all those stinking years of being the ringless wonders, finally get your first Super Bowl ring? Lord, 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 Lord. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you soon.